Well, welcome once again. This is the Doctor of Digital at the Doctor of Digital Podcast. Purpose of the show is to transform your business and life with education and inspiration. I introduce busy business leaders to trends in business, technology, and marketing to highlight people you should know. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be at the forefront of blockchain technology, shaping the future of decentralized systems? My next guest has been doing just that for over three decades, pioneering innovations and changing the way we think about digital transactions and data security. Join us as we dive into the mind of a true visionary in the world of emerging technologies. Roberto Capodici is an Italian-born technology innovator whose impact on blockchain technology and decentralized systems is nothing short of revolutionary. Starting his IT career at a remarkably young age, Roberto has consistently pushed the boundaries of what's possible in the digital realm. His journey has taken him from Italy to Florida and now to Asia, where he strategically balances his life in Bali with his business activities in Singapore's thriving tech scene. Roberto's extensive experience and deep passion for emerging technologies has positioned him as a key player in shaping the future of blockchain technology and applications of decentralized systems, making him one of the most influential figures in a rapidly evolving field. During this episode, we'll do a deep dive into the changes and hot topics of blockchain, its biggest challenges and growth, and I will leverage the expertise of my guests and how to navigate the unique dynamics of the field. By the end of this episode, you'll be better equipped to know what to do, and I encourage you to contact my guest, Roberto Capodici, Chief Technology Officer and Blockchain Evangelist. With that, I want to welcome Roberto to the show. How are you doing today, Roberto? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me in your show. Well, it's my pleasure because, for goodness sakes, we got to see a lot about your background and who and what you are. Could you tell us a little bit about your blockchain, how you got started in this thing? What's the story? Like, How did you jump into this particular field? Well, I come from a lot of uh, passion and work in uh, communication uh, and technology. Blockchain is a much recent uh, thing. I was uh, there at the right moment in the right place because in entrepreneurship, luck is a big uh, chance of, uh, you know, something people need because you can work hard, but if you're not lucky, hardly you go ahead. And it happened. I was already in decentralization uh, right. because I like peer-to-peer -peer network. I was uh, hacking the protocol of BitTorrent, which is a tool to download files from the internet. And right. in this community, small community worldwide, there were people working on these uh, other projects. So I received uh, one uh, copy of the software of uh, uh, Bitcoin before it was published. Uh, so in contact with the first people. Yeah. And then uh, this brought me into this, uh, you know, um, new technology. Because it's a new technology made with the old components. So nothing was sure. particularly new, if not the way that those were used. And uh, and then I embraced uh, the, the way and I started making project for blockchain, but not for cryptocurrencies. So use of blockchain on other fields, which is uh, something interesting. <laughs> sure. You know, it, it's such a rapid, like technology in general is changing a lot. But I'm really curious, what sort of changes have you seen that you could talk about? Well, so... Maybe in two minutes, I try to explain everybody what blockchain is because sure. uh, many people would have heard about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. And yes. what makes those possible is this technology called blockchain. But uh, the use case of cryptocurrency is just the tip of the iceberg. There are tons of other possible use cases that uh, are uh, empowered by this technology. Okay. If you think uh, in the evolution of uh, the information technology, we start uh, digitizing things. So things from mm. uh, analog became digital, like music was in vinyl disc, uh, or videotape, VHS, and now is everything in digital format. Yes. And becoming digital, things are easy to copy. 
So I have an MP3 file. I can make 10 copies. You don't know which is the original anymore because the bit R10 are copied exactly the same, okay? All in right. uh, analog, you see the quality, the grade with copies, but in digital, it remains the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, the big uh, um, issue with digital things uh, is that, uh, that there was no singularity, no unicity of items. So I cannot have something that... Uh, is mine, and if I give it to you, is no more mine, is yours. But if you think well with the Bitcoin, if I send somebody a Bitcoin, I don't have it anymore. Yeah. So the big miracle that there is, is that in the digital world, you can create an item that even though it's made in bit and bytes, still has a unicity. So once I give it to you, I don't have it anymore. That's why it is NFT with a strange monkey. The people sold it for a lot of money were interesting. Not much for the yeah. monkey by per se, but the fact that you can claim ownership and show to the people the ownership of something digital. And in a world that is evolving into a digital everything, digital mm -hmm. radio, digital, what we're doing now is digital, you know, the podcast of two people in different parts of the world are talking. We create a content that is digital. Is beautiful the fact that we can attach authenticity and singularity to the ownership of something digital. Digital art is created, digital piece of art. You can sell it to somebody, and right. somebody can claim to be the owner, resell it. So under this, uh, in more practical approach, blockchain can allow people to do things like uh, title ownership. So I can put the title of my car in form of an NFT, if you want to, to make it easy to understand, in the blockchain, and then trade with others so I can sell you my car without having to go to the MV, to the you know office where the car registry is held to change the name because uh, we can do something directly from one person to another and guaranteed by crypto cryptography. So by mathematics, uh, there is no forging document and no falsifying documents. So it's something very, very powerful and yeah. that can be applied to so many other things. So I'm you know, really try to bring this uh, ahead. I did the uh, document management, bureaucracy flows, all managed with the, this technology, removing the man in the middle without the need to elect somebody to be the trustee for uh, documentation from for fact, which you trust mathematics only. So it's pretty cool. I think it's a revolutionary technology that uh, is going to change things a lot. Sure. And speaking of decentralized, that's about as decentralized as it can get because it's individual to individual as opposed to having to go to like a DMV to change a transfer. It's really decentralized. It's person to person. Correct. Exactly. Which comes with a lot of responsibility, too, because yeah. when you go through a middleman, if you make a mistake, you can go to the middleman to fix it. When you do it directly, you cannot go to anybody to fix a mistake, right? So, okay. so this, but, you know, I accept that this part <laughs> rather than having to trust a third party, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and again, talking about the changes, I'm also curious about hot topics because this is a hot topic in general, right? But what would you say are some of the trends or the hot topics that you see currently? In specific technology like yeah. blockchain, yes, you right. can see that one of the first use cases that has been applied outside cryptocurrencies, okay, because I mean, yeah. we all know about cryptocurrencies, so I'm not going to to repeat what happened with Bitcoin and other things, right? Yeah. But is the use of this technology, I'm talking even before Ethereum, which is the second revolution in the blockchain came out, was used to certify ownership of land in okay. countries that are highly, with highly corruption, there are people in the registry of land that start deleting the name of one farmer and put the name of their cousin. And suddenly they are legally owned of, uh, you know, a huge piece of land just because they, uh, you know, falsify. It happened to in Italy as well. So mm -hmm. not only in the world country. Okay. So uh, external commission, like, you know, they did this project where... Uh, the registry will record it in a blockchain format, so cryptographically secure, so there is no corruption in place to change the name. The, the, change, the name change will happen only cryptographically signed, so with an audit of who did the change, when and what. So this was very powerful because it shows the power of this thing. It shows also why is difficult to get it accepted inside large institution where people want to have the elasticity to play a little bit with the rules, right? So yeah. it's a little bit of a, an interesting aspect. Nobody will say no, but it's a slow process. Mostly when it comes to large institution government, they never 
embrace new technology on yeah. the on the fly consider fax machine uh, which if we have very young viewer are machine where you put a piece of paper and comes out the copy on the other side right. something very strange are still uh, regulated as a valid document for banks that's why many banks uh, still ask you to send a fax with the right. copy because this in court of law has a validity maybe in many country emails uh, start getting valid now but uh, other format of communication are not yet regulated to be valid in court of law so sometimes regulators slow down the evolution of technology yeah. so before uh, communication like or data cryptographically signed like the blockchain are going to be valid by regulator it's going to take time but in the meanwhile the technology mature enough to be good enough for the moment that is going to be adopted I mean, there are country where it's already but you know not worldwide yeah you know i'm curious how you develop this kind of a unique approach and it's so new that it's really new for a lot of people it's groundbreaking so how did you develop these sort of groundbreaking ideas and get this unique approach to systems it's not it's not easy i i think that the more we are educated on something more our head is inside the box uh, that has hard time to think outside of it so strangely into some technology I try to get less informed than uh, somebody that really knows everything because when you really know everything then uh, that's where your minds go when you want a solution oh. if uh, you are less educated on the specifics uh, then your mind uh, try to come out with the solution that can okay. be groundbreaking, you know? Yeah. So this is uh, an advantage somehow when coming to, as a work, I do consulting mainly. So a large company called me to find uh, the best solution for a particular issue they have, uh, you know, that uh, usually is about money, how much money you lose for a problem in a year, how much the solution costs not to lose those money. If uh, in a couple of years you cover the losses uh, that from the third year is all money made. So they like technological solution to solve problem. So arriving in a place with a fresh mind to be able to come out with a solution that has not been taught before, because probably when they come to me, they already tried other things and they failed, okay. is the perfect approach to uh, come out with a powerful solution that can actually uh, take. And this, this comes out to be most of the time or sometime, if you want, some uh, innovation or some groundbreaking approach to particular problems, uh, to a new technology or new approach to things. That's how I think it, things happen. You know? So you're thinking outside the box. I'm curious too, because you have such an interesting international background from Italy to Florida, to Bali, to Singapore. Has that had an impact or is that what you say maybe has gotten you multicultural and then open to innovation or more open to new ideas? Surely getting to know different culture and working with people in different culture and something that taught me a lot is also how to approach, uh, how to be more respectful with people. Because sometimes by culture, like uh, Western country, we're much more direct. We say things, you know, when you do consulting, it's very difficult because some clients want to hear you to say to them what they want to hear and not what you actually mm -hmm. need to tell them. So it becomes super difficult to say, no, you are doing the wrong choice. You need to change this thing, you know. Terrible to say you made a mistake there, you know. So you need to be able to communicate. So you become a sort of psychologist as well when it comes to make sure the client is happy and yet you can help them uh, to do the right choice, you know. And this is very different uh, based on different cultures, different countries. Europe itself is variegated from country to country. It's not just you travel very small distance, you have a completely different culture, even inside the single nation. So having these extremes from... Uh, super west like the united states and super east like asia i can really approach uh, well many different uh, point of view and in also how solutions need to be applied uh, for example customs you cannot disrupt the way people work so many times somebody is used to do one particular thing you need to come sure. with a solution that approach the way that they work and not that they change the way that they work. So, for example, in Asian, many countries, China, because like, they like to stamp things. 
that's the the stamp uh, is uh, like in Japan uh, in place of signing people have personalized stamps that they use so how you let them keep working the same way but you need to build up a stamp that has a bluetooth uh, things that uh, save in the computer the moment that has been stamped or you know can uh, combine uh, pictures so it, there is a lot of interesting approach uh, that uh, maybe are not the most ideal in terms of technology, mm. but they are mo the most ideal in terms of adoption. So you make sure that once you come out with a solution, uh, people have uh, not too much disruption in the way they work, uh, so the solution is adopted because nothing worse than a solution that people no nobody want to use, you know? So right. it's, sure. as good it is technically, it's, <laughs> it's terrible in terms of, uh, you know. There's sort of an idea that, you know, that people resist change and we're creatures of habit. So if you Absolutely. do something and it's so different from what they're ordinarily doing, and a lot of workers are like this, obviously, right? They work and they're told exactly what to do and that's Absolutely. all they want to know. So this is for sure one of the important aspects in uh, approaching when you are into disruptive new technologies uh, for how it sounds good. When it comes to the real job, then you have this sort of uh, problems, right? So that uh, you need to leave uh, people doing their work the way they know how to do it. Uh, and you put behind, underneath the layer of uh, innovation for which their work becomes 10 times more effective, uh, it comes uh, much more secure, errors are detected, uh, but the way they work changes very little to nothing. You know? So that's this is beautiful also to see this, you know. What are the what are the most convincing things for people when you introduce blockchain technology to them? Do they see and do you explain how this is better, or makes a job easier, faster, quicker, what have you? Interesting. Most people call me because they want to add new technologies to what they do. Right. Okay. And uh, I usually work in stages. First of all, I need to learn what they do. Okay. And then I need to explain to them the opportunity that the centralized system, okay. peer-to-peer system offers. And then together we can say, okay, based on what I learned that the client do, I can say, maybe this thing we can do in this way. And the client learning, which is the opportunity, can say, ah, but we can do that. And we correct each other. So after this yeah. three step, we know very well what can be done. And what cannot be done then if they work in a particular industry that is possibly regulated then can be brought in a consultant that is an expert of the industry specifically mm. to say like this technically can be done but it's not legal or can cause this issue down the chain in a certain way you know okay. so we want to perfect and then we see how this system can be integrated with what already exists you know in the way to be less painful as possible to the adoption mm -hmm. and uh, and then we choose the technology and then uh, we go with implementation. So it's very important to do the first phases before starting to implement something because and making sure the technology is really useful to solve the problem that they have because mm. if it's just to use the buzzword and to do a marketing or to go an IPO and show that you have the best technology, then we can put it as a collateral, but don't go to touch the core the core way of working for a company. Because Understood. It makes a whole lot of sense. So we talked about the cultural and the advantages of what you've been able to do, the topics that you see that are currently and the changes. And I'm curious about what sort of actionable tips could you offer your expertise of your background? Like, what do you, what would you offer somebody if you're working with them, they want to work with you? Well, uh, a different point of view, a different angle on uh, what is done by them. You know, the, the biggest issue we have as human is that, uh, as you were saying, we are, you know, like beans of habit. Mm. So when you are into a business uh, doing this daily for a long time, and maybe even uh, for generations, uh, you are super expert in the specific of your business. Sure. But you tend to lose uh, the bird eye view of what your business means inside the larger context. Mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, you know, somebody that uh, doesn't know exactly like what I was saying before, being ignorant is a blessing sometimes because yep. allow you to say things that may be totally stupid and people understanding, uh, uh, you know, brainstorming people can say those stupid things. But uh, on the other hand, uh, between those stupid things, there can be one genius 
uh, idea when Zinus approach, uh, and many times this come out to be the best solution for uh, for the issue. Somebody that is inside the business will never think outside the box. I was right. saying before, and so this is a and, and you see the eureka moment in the eye of the person you're talking to. So you know you touch the right things, uh, and then you can uh, you know uh, cultivate that aspect. So is a. Uh, it's really is like a psychologist of business, if you right. want, uh, for right. with the in the the medicine are not uh, talking in pharmacy about technology applied to that, you know. So that's well, you have some actionable tips and some ideas. To introduce what you've done, and you've got a, obviously a really expertise in this area. Now I'm curious, how would a person get a hold of you if they were interested in what you've been saying and they would like to work with you? Sure. Um, my LinkedIn uh, profile is quite easy. It's linkedin.com slash IN slash RC10. RC, like Roberto Capodieci. 10 because the H in Italian is number 10. So <laughs> RC, Roberto Capo, 10, Roberto Capodieci. And, uh, you know, all RCX.it is a shortcut to my website. I'm making a new one coming out soon. Right. Uh, and those are the simple way or my email is roberto at capodici.com, which is also straightforward sure. <laughs> too. But, you know, so that's very, a simple way to contact me. Very interesting. I mean, I think this is a groundbreaking area, and I think this is really exciting area. So hopefully you get a lot of people who are saying just as excited as I am about seeing all these great things. Thanks for taking some time out. I really appreciate your time, and I really appreciate you showing Thank up. Thank you for having me. Today. Thank you so much, Roberto. Thanks. You know, if you want to hear more of things like this, Roberto and others, make sure that you are liking, subscribing, positively reviewing, and sharing the Dr. Digital Podcast everywhere. You know, and also, here's an offer for you. I help business leaders, CEOs, and entrepreneurs break through their obscurity through oral and written presentations, building credibility and authority. You can join me on the private Facebook group, and also you can enjoy those things as well. The sponsors of the program, I'd like to thank them, of course, the publishers of Burning America and also On Track, Ian Hunter. Until next time, this is the Doctor of Digital signing off, Deus Vault.